What's poppin' everybody? Say Rule 94. I want to talk a little bit about the TCG meta right now and Forbidden Light. The set that we're gonna get uh, pretty soon in about a, a month, less than a month actually. So right now, uh, there's a lot of, uh, well not a lot, but there's a good little variety of decks that can do good. Uh, you've got some Gardevoir, you've got uh, Galissapod, you've got Lucario. But the thing is, is that the best decks are the, the decks that are able to utilize the Zoroark GX the best. Uh, cheap energy has the ability to draw cards and shit. So things like Lucario, fucking Galissapod, even things like just Lycanroc with uh, Zoark, uh, they're probably the the decks that can utilize uh, that card better. But I feel like things are gonna change with Forbidden Light, guaranteed this time. I mean, the metal shit uh, from Ultra Prism, uh, it, it did some stuff. I feel like people aren't playing the deck the right way. I wish I had the cards to build a good, consistent type of deck because I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't want to be arrogant uh, playing all these Raybor kind of decks all these years, but it is what it is. But I feel like that deck has a lot of potential still. But the thing is, things are going to change with Forbidden Light. Malamar is going to be coming from that set, and that is basically a Dynamotor Electric. And that deck has proven to be very powerful in the past, but it has a lot of, it has more trouble in the expanded format. There's a lot more combos a lot more shit it has to deal with a lot of variations and kind of decks that can be played so it has a little bit of trouble also requires is kind of uh, he's, he's losing his touch to power creep unfortunately but the thing is with the fucking malamar and ultra and Crosma gx is that they've got a lot of benefits man they've got uh, first of all being in the standard format the card pool is much more limited so they, they can easily shine more. Like, they don't have to worry about a lot of shit that will be an expanded. Uh, the other thing is that that alternate Cosmo card, man, it's just it's too broken. Uh, right now, the thing is with the GX Pokemon is the there's a lot of uh, uh, good combos with, you know, taking advantage of the GX's Pokemon high HP, using like a roller and shit. Maybe not so much Max Potion, but that kind of strategy. Uh, taking advantage of that. Galissapod did this. Uh, Lucario GX is doing this with scoop ups and shit I've seen, but there hasn't been really a great Pokemon that ha has the ability to knock these big ass Pokemon one hit easily. I mean, you've got of course uh, Don D Duskman and Krasma right now with uh, the metal stuff, but uh, that's just one of the guys that I guess I mean is the kind of Ray Bor kind of style. You got to bring out the fucking Magnuson and shit and do all that stuff. But a deck like Ray Illus, people are probably going to say it's more consistent, which is what this Ultra Necrozma Malamar deck is going to be. Uh, it really has, they, they've got everything they need to be successful, honestly. Uh, that deck, what you need, you need the guy that's going to grab the energies from the discard pile, and you need good Pokemon to take advantage of that, check. I mean, even if we don't uh, think about Ultra Necrozma GX from Forbidden Light, there's already a bunch of great psychic Pokemon that are just going to be so happy uh, to see Malamar, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna give him great support either way. But obviously, Ultra Necrozma GX is gonna be the best Pokemon to take advantage of that. It just does too much high damage, man. Uh, very, very high damage. Like, just discarding two Psychic Energies, it does 180. So, just with a Choice Ban, and since it's Dragon, you can even use the Devard Field. You don't even need to discard a third energy, and you're knocking. The stage GX Pokemon out in one hit, stage ones. Now, if you discard three, which is the best <laughs> scenario, you're doing like what? 200 and uh, I think 240 damage, yeah. So, 240 damage, knocking out basically anything you want. Only stage two GX Pokemon are gonna survive. And you can just fix that with a Devard Stadium, Devard Field, or just a Choice Band. You knock anything out. And I mean, you don't even need those. You just discard the fourth energy, and it's game. And the other thing that they need that they got in Ultra Prism is you need to have a way to switch around and have free free retreat and control over the board like that. And, you know, we've got fucking Dawn Wings Necrozma. So it's going to be basically the Psychic Necrozma deck kind of thing, the Necrozma fucking deck. You've got that guy to give you free retreat around the board. And he can also actually attack in that deck too since it utilizes Psychic Energy. So you've got a solid... 3 energy attack, you've got a GX attack if you're behind in prizes, and Ultra GX, Ultra Necrozma GX has a, a good GX attack as well, man. That's gonna 
wrap the game if you use it right. So I feel like the deck is really, really powerful. It's basically Ray Eels enhanced version for this format. Decks that like that, they're going to be able to easily just get one hit knockouts and you don't even need all the map coronets and all the kind of support that's necessary in things like Magnezone. Uh, you just set up quickly your bench and shit, the fucking Malamars, and kill things. I mean, even the Necrozma GX, the original one from Burning Shadows, doesn't do quite as much damage. But I mean, it's also a candidate if you can't get a, if you can't get access to uh, the other, the good Necrozma, the one that's going to come in for Bent Light Ultra Necrozma. You can even just grab that guy and he's going to do the job. Uh, his ability that he is immune to colorless Pokemon might be handy too. So there's a lot of options, man. A lot of uh, great shit with this Psychic Malamar deck that's going to come out. And if if the the dude was like a Psychic dude, maybe weak to darkness, it would have been a whole different story. Because then Zorark GX can easily knock you out in one hit. But because it's weak to Fairy, you know, Zorark GX isn't going to be able to touch that dude. You know, all the neat combos you can do with his, uh, uh, with Mallow and, uh, you know, drawing the cards uh, with him. It won't be that good when he can just... The Ultra Necros Magic is going to get one hit Night Guts. Of course, I'm not saying the deck is going to be shit. Zorark GX is going to be shit. But dying in one hit is pretty strong. Now, Gardevoir might actually become better, like I've said once again. It might become more popular because... Number one, it is one of the Pokemon that can... Maybe with a little bit of setup, with a little... With a few extra energies, it can get one hit Night Guts because it does such mass damage easily. But now with Ultra Necrozma GX being weak to Fairy, is a Dragon Dude weak to Fairy, uh, typical. So, you know, Gardevoir GX is going to have a very easy time killing that guy. I mean, you discard energy, so it, it won't have probably a lot of energies around. It, it's probably going to have only one energy on him when after it attacks. But, you know, Gardevoir GX can take advantage of the weakness. And that guy has 190 HP. He's very good, of course. He's a basic GX Pokemon. But uh, he's in that range where a, a little bit of, you know, Gardevoir uh, support, a few energies, you know, choice band. A Gardevoir can knock that dude out in one hit easily. And I feel like that deck is probably going to uh, see even more play. It's going to become more popular again, Gardevoir GX, if Ultra Necrozma Malamar become the new next hot thing. And I think they will. I think it's just too broken of a concept. I mean, I'm definitely going to try it if I get the cards, hopefully in time. Haven't even gotten the Ultra Prism stuff yet. Damn, but don't have money to spare. What can you do? Got to wait a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, it's just powerful. It really is. I mean, if it was like the, in the expanded format, it's going to have more competition. The expanded format has a lot more cards, a lot more nasty shit, a lot of more ways to counter that it can't really be invincible there's always going to be one deck uh, uh, one sort of strategy that you're going to be weak against you're not going to be that good but in the standard format which has more limited options and you just have more control of okay this is what it's going to be good this is what's good basically and ultra and Cosmo gx can kill all that i mean damn so that's what i feel like i feel like the deck is going to be pretty good uh, it's it really is crazy, man. All the fucking damage that guy can do is, is too much. Like, just discarding two energies, you're at 180. So, you, you <laughs> I mean, just with that and a choice ban, you're already getting one hit knockouts on the stage GX Pokemon, most of them. And that should be the main thing. And just one more energy, man, killing everything. It's just too easy. The only problem I guess the deck is going to maybe have to face is it's a different kind of metagame now. And I feel like bench, uh, having bench space is really important. We don't have Skyfield anymore like we used to, so people won't be able to take advantage of that. But, you know, if you're going to play a bunch of Tapu Leles and shit to be consistent and get your engine going set up, you're going to have to deal with the fact that you're going to run out of space on the bench. That deck is going to need like two to three uh, Malamars on the field to power that guy up. I mean, like I've said, maybe you can get away with just two. It might be a ride. But I think for the most part, people are just going to want to have three around. But who knows? Maybe with the mass damage it does, uh, you can get away with two. I've gotten away with two using Ray Eels sometimes. Uh, but that's back in the day when doing 180 damage was the hot shit. So, yeah. 
Uh, we're gonna see, but yeah, you definitely need space on the bench for the fucking Malamars and the fucking uh, downwings, the Krasma. You gotta have your free retreat guy around the board. Now, maybe that deck is gonna run Tapu Koko. I don't see that being something bad. We don't have Sky or Bridge, but we do have a bunch of other shit actually. We've got the Ultra of the Moon. That helps with free retreat basically too. It's gonna do the same job. So they really just have everything they need. Come Forbidden Light, they're going to have everything they need to be successful. Maybe, like I've said, things like Parallel Stadium 2 or the Pseudo Wudo, uh, limiting your bench will fuck you up, kind of hinders you. And it's tough to really counter that. Uh, if an opponent uses Pseudo Wudo, it's tough to kind of counter that. You know, use maybe Guzma and shit, but it's kind of a waste. So you're going to have to deal with the fact that bench space is going to be a bitch for you. But if the deck can't deal with that and... I think, yeah, Pseudo Wudo is going to be a pain for that deck. It's going to be very powerful. It's going to knock anything out in one hit. Stage 2 GX Pokemon included. So that's my little rant. Looking forward to Forbidden Light, but looking even more forward to the set after that, since it's going to be the Hoenn set and Dragon Storm. But hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys subscribe. Leave a like. Show this with your friends. Tell me what you guys think. And I'll see you guys next time. What's up?